As Wirt braves the elements to seek out his brother, he runs into Beatrice, who's also looking for him. Beatrice! You should go home! Wirt now has the confidence in himself that he can, in fact, handle this on his own. He also has the empathy not to put a friend in danger. He's not coming from a place of bitterness or isolation this time. This time, it's a place of responsibility. I can't! Not until Greg is safe! Beatrice, too, has learned a bit of empathy. She won't forgive herself unless she helps fix what she had a hand in causing. She's remorseful and willing to make up for what she did wrong, even if it puts herself at risk. Wirt agrees to let her come along. He trusts her and respects her choice to put herself in danger if she wants to. And he knows that while he is strong enough to go alone now, he's stronger with friendship. No one's exploiting anyone this time. Wirt and Beatrice are now a team of equals. Meanwhile, when the woodsman finds Greg slowly becoming a tree, he's awakened to the fact that the Edelwoods that he's been chopping down have actually been the souls of those lost in the woods. The woodsman never knew that he was hurting people this whole time. Perhaps he thought that if he turned his heart away from others and stayed on task, his suffering would just be his own. But surely if he had talked to people, like say those folks in the tavern, he would have learned about the beast's dark methods. Similar to Wirt's recent realization, the woodsman now sees avoiding entanglements with others can still cause harm. Would you have just let your daughter's spirit burn out forever? I do not speak of my daughter. She would not wish this. The woodsman sees that he's been going against the memory of his daughter by obsessing over this grim task. He's been keeping her half alive all this time in that lantern, not dealing with the real grief of his loss. Sometimes you can't cut yourself off from your emotions. Sometimes love is feeling the pain. Wirt arrives on the scene and now sees Greg turning into an Edelwood tree. Greg tries to apologize to Wirt, but Wirt knows he isn't to blame. It's my fault we ended up here. Everything's been my fault. No excuses, no passing the buck. Wirt takes responsibility. Wirt loves his brother, and it hurts to see him like this. And this time, he's not shutting down when things get too much to bear. He's crying legit tears of love. He's feeling his emotions, because sometimes love is feeling the pain. But Greg has been having his own character arc on the side. Back in the real world, he had stolen a rock with a face painted on it from his neighbor's house. And now he's realizing that stealing is wrong, and he wants to return the rock. The Beast finally intervenes, giving Wirt the ultimate test of his character arc. Your brother is too weak to go home. He will soon become part of my forest. I won't let that happen. Perhaps we better make a deal. The Beast offers to put Greg's spirit in the lantern, and as long as the flame stays lit, he will live on inside. This is exactly the deal he made with the woodsman for his daughter. Yes, we've come full circle. Take on the task of lantern bearer, or watch your brother perish. The Beast's terms are not optimal. Greg will be banished to a lantern, and Wirt will be closed off forever from others, just like the woodsman. In this moment, Wirt sees this sacrifice as a necessary noble act. Everyone has a torch to burn. This will be his burden to bear. <sighs> okay. <gasps> Wirt! This is in fact the conclusion that the woodsman helped Wirt reach at the end of the first episode. It is your burden to bear! But what about that second episode, after Wirt meets Beatrice? And then what are you gonna do? Just wander around, this way and that way, through the woods, forevermore? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Wirt didn't have an answer to this back then. But what about now? We've finally come to the last love word in the series. Philautia, or self-love. We all need a certain amount of appreciation and empathy toward ourselves, an unconditional self-acceptance. Without self-love, it's harder to love other people because we might judge them with the harshness as we judge ourselves. Wirt tends to assume that people are going to screw him over, like when he thought Beatrice left him in Pottsville, or like when he thought Beatrice left him with Adelaide. He even assumes several characters want to kill him, such as the Pumpkin People, and Auntie Whispers, and the Woodsman. Wirt also assumes that his fellow classmates want nothing to do with him, when it's clear that at least Sarah actively wants him around. So we see that Wirt's low self-image keeps him from enjoying other people's company. It's harder to express love when you yourself feel unlovable. If you feel unworthy, you might just keep punishing yourself. And this moment with the Beast is the final test of this philosophy. The Beast has presented Wirt with a scenario that would in theory save Greg to an extent, but doom Wirt to a lifetime of isolation, wandering the woods, forever hating himself for letting Greg down. It's a selfless act, but it's too selfless. There has to be another way. At this point, Wirt sees that no good can come from punishing himself like that. What are you gonna do? Just wander around through the woods forevermore? Wait, that's dumb. I'm not just gonna wander around in the woods for the rest of my life. And there he's finally answered Beatrice's question. People need people. We've seen it time and time again in every episode. Wirt has love for his friends, his family, and his community. And it would suck to be alone forever. And it would suck for them to be without him. Wirt sees himself as worth saving. You just have some weird obsession with keeping this lantern lit. It's almost like 
Your soul is in this lantern. Word is catching on. The beast promises to end suffering, but only tells you what you think you want to hear. Things to justify your suffering rather than a way out. The beast is a liar. Don't believe his lies. In a last ditch attempt, the beast threatens Wirt with his greatest fear, the unknown. Are you ready to see true darkness? But Wirt is ready for that now. Are you? <gasps> don't! Don't! Wirt sees that the beast isn't to be feared at all. He's stronger than the beast. The beast needs Wirt to isolate himself, but Wirt's done doing that. In his final act in the world of the unknown, Wirt hands the lantern back over to the woodsman. He himself needs to come to terms with his own grief. The woodsman needs the opportunity to see through the lie he's been living this whole time. She was never in the lantern, was she, beast? You'll never see your daughter again, woodsman. The woodsman blows out the lantern, finally confronting the darkness, a life where he can properly grieve his lost daughter and move on. And after giving Beatrice the magic scissors she needs to save her family, Wirt says a heartfelt goodbye to his dear friend. Goodbye, Beatrice. Goodbye, Wirt. Wirt awakens back in the real world, in the pond at the edge of drowning. He pulls his brother and frog companion out of the water. As Wirt collapses on the ground, the friends who he thought didn't care for him come to his rescue. Wirt awakens in the hospital to see everyone there. Sarah tells Wirt she wants to listen to his tape, but she doesn't have a cassette player. There's still a chance for Wirt to take it back and forget about her. But this time, he leans into the unknown. You can listen to it at my house. Yes. The conditions may not be perfect, but they don't need to be. Wirt has finally opened himself up to the risks of love and has saved himself from a life of sadness and isolation. He's finally going to start acting alive. In the end, Wirt had a hand in bringing more love into everyone's lives. The woodsman actually gets his daughter back, now seeing the truth. Lorna gets her leisure time with her beloved Auntie Whispers. Lady Grey gets Endicott, overcoming their fear of ghosts. The Toymaker has new inspiration for his craft. Langtree and Jimmy Brown are together. Enoch hangs out with his new skeleton buddies. Beatrice, now having learned a valuable lesson about communication and empathy has confessed to her family that she was the one who turned them into bluebirds and they completely forgave her. And Greg, the boy who impulsively stole from people, puts the rock back, now knowing he's not the only person in the world. People need people. And although love is scary and love is painful, the alternative is nothing and the rewards are everything. Death finds us all eventually. All we have to do is wait. But love has to be welcomed in. And it's that act of trust, more than the menial tasks and hobbies and navel-gazing and nihilism, that makes life more than a meaningless obligation. It makes life, life. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip through one of my favorite shows. If you like the series and you want to support the channel financially, there's a link to my Ko-fi account in the description. But if you're low on funds and you still want to help out, why not post your favorite storygraph video on Reddit somewhere? Being that it's December, may I suggest the video about the Nightmare Before Christmas or Home Alone? And of course the fun doesn't have to end there. Comment below with a link or title to your favorite Over the Garden Wall videos and we can make the ultimate playlist together. Well that's it for me for this year. See you in 2023.